welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. It turns out there's a white genocide occurring in South Africa. Simon Roche, who represents a civil defense organization called Swedlanders, is speaking out while others are silent. Simon, thanks for visiting with us today. Thank you very much, Steve, for giving us a voice during this difficult time. Now, you have a great way of making the statistics of the crisis understandable. Just how dangerous is it to be a farmer in South Africa? To be a policeman in South Africa is extraordinarily dangerous. To answer your question with that background reference, it is 2.02 times more dangerous for a white South African farmer than it is for a policeman. And this, this is concerning murder. That's very hard to believe, but I have faith that you're speaking the the truth. Let me ask you this. How dangerous is it to be a white female in South Africa? It is half as dangerous to be a living, breathing, three-year-old white girl in South Africa as it was to be a grown man in infantry combat in Vietnam. But it's not just a a matter of murder. Uh, There's a lot of sexual violence being done for, for, I guess, political reasons. Maybe you can give us a statistic on that. Using liberal, non-governmental activist organizations as a reference point, there is a consensus among them that the minimum statistic of likelihood of a woman in South Africa to be raped, that this is all women, black and white and and colored and so on, is one in three. So there is about a 30% chance of any woman in South Africa being raped during the course of her lifetime. And I'd like to add to that uh, that it's a a very well-known phenomenon and discussed in certain circles, not very politically correct, but amongst uh, certain clinical psychologists and specialists and others, um, uh, it it is uh, widely acknowledged that part of the rape problem is due to the cultural of uh, traditional medicine, whereby uh, witch doctors and um, herbalists and others uh, will tell a man that has HIV AIDS that if he has sexual intercourse with a virgin, he will be cured of the HIV AIDS. Just talking in terms of general violence, uh, what kind of excuse is being given by the instigators to say, well, we're okay to do this? They call it the legacy of apartheid. Uh, which is to say that uh, black people were so humiliated by apartheid that they can't help feeling some uh, vindictiveness towards white people. That that is the generally given reason uh, by the government and by liberals and and so on. Well, a three-year-old girl had nothing to do with uh, apartheid, and and we certainly don't want to justify the the racial problems that happened in the past and, and say, well, people were, were right to discriminate and, and treat blacks like that. But it just doesn't seem like how it can translate into it's okay for today. What can you do? People will make up every kind of excuse they can so that it doesn't reflect poorly upon them. It's always somebody else's fault. Well, say a South African uh, jumps through the many hoops it takes to get a gun for self-defense. What kind of limitations does he face in challenging a home invader. The law stipulates that you cannot use unequal force, what they call unequal force. So in other words, if a home invader comes in, you can't, you know, sort of hide in the corner in the darkness and shoot them through the chest and kill them. Uh, In theory, uh, you have to address them first and ascertain what means they have at their disposal for attacking you. Now, it's it's patently ridiculous. It's uh, childishly absurd, to put it mildly. But that is the theoretical law. If magistrates and judges have been tolerant about it uh, because they can see for themselves that the law of the government is thoroughly stupid. But in theory, that's how it is. In other words, if a guy comes in and he's only got a knife and, and you shoot him dead with a rifle, well, that was a bit unfair. Wow. Well, l- let me ask you this. Uh, why is the mainstream media so silent about this? Steve, we believe 
that the mainstream media is silent on this matter for two salient reasons. Firstly, the mainstream media is controlled by what we call global capital. And it is part of the narrative of the new South Africa is that global capital and the media support the new South Africa and are shown to endorse it. The second reason is that they will look very foolish. They have been historically the major proponents, the most significant proponents of this egalitarian South Africa. So for them now to start revealing that it's a, sort of a hoax will reflect very, very poorly. And, and we believe, it is our opinion, that that's what lies behind it. This aversion is all about not losing credibility in the face of the Western media, media consumer. Well, that, that brings me to my next question. Uh, I remember reading some material, I guess it was uh, over 20 years ago, and it linked Nelson and Winnie Mandela to the practice of setting fire to tires placed around the necks of political opponents. I did not know what to think about it then. What's your perspective? It's a fact, and there are many recordings of videos which attest to it. That this particular form of retribution against their opponents called necklacing, where they would put fuel, gasoline, inside a tire and uh, put it around the person's neck and then set fire to it. And the reasoning, there was actually reasoning behind it. The reasoning was that the, the brutality would serve as an intimidation of other potential opponents. Well, considering uh, the violence that's happening today, it, that's uh, very believable. It seems like things are about as bad as they could get. How much worse can they get? As Dr. Gregory Stanton of Genocide Watch in Washington, D.C., who is by far the world's leading predictor of genocides, has put it, he said this low-intensity conflict is clearly an orchestrated thing. In other words, he was implying that it has the, the tacit facilitation of the South African government against white people in order to cow them off the land, to intimidate them, to frighten them away before an open conflict occurs. Wow. Well, I, I know we have a lot of listeners, and this kind of news upsets them. They haven't been aware that this problem is there. How can they help? Steve, we would be bitterly grateful for their help. I'm in the USA at the moment specifically for the purposes of raising funds to purchase civilian vital necessities. St. Lunders is a Christian conservative civil defense organization constituted under international laws. We are a non-militant organization. The government has tried to catch us out many times and not once successfully prosecuted us because we adhere rigidly to the law. Otherwise, we will lose every moral high ground that we have and every legal standing. So we simply are only oriented towards the, the welfare, safeguarding the welfare of civilian non-combatants, and we are raising money for things like diesel fuel, medical supplies, and so on. And if people wish to donate, they may do so. It goes into an account which is held in legal trust. So the money is, is spent according to a legally ratified constitution on these civilian vital necessities and then audited independently twice over. So their money will be well looked after and spent only on those purposes, not not for administration or salaries or whatever you like, fancy cars or anything like that. Now they may go onto our website. It is satelanders.org. And in the bottom right-hand corner is a PayPal link, which is very easy. You've certainly given us a lot to think about, Simon. Thanks for the visit. Thank you very much, Steve. Simon Roche works with a civil defense group called Swedlanders. To learn more, visit their website at swedlanders.org. That's spelled S-U-I-D-L-A-N-D-E-R-S dot org. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.